the Palestinian people, the global uprising when you see hundreds of thousands of people out marching, when you're looking all over the world, all over the world, hundreds of thousands of people. Here in Ireland, we have people who are constantly writing to our local representatives, to our government. Unfortunately, they're still not prepared to take action. We know that Israel has destroyed every university in Gaza. Leading academics, artists and journalists are being murdered at even a higher rate than other Gazans. So it's very clear, I believe, that Israel is conducting an assassination campaign designed to unravel the fabric of Palestinian civil society in Gaza. And I do think that the ultimate goal of this assault is ethnic cleansing. I suspect that there's something underlying this political abuse process that we never tap into. I'm not trying to get anyone depressed, I'm talking about new resources for the struggle we're in and realising more clearly the situation we're in. And that is the invocation of the mystique of violence, the creation, the perpetuation of the notion of violence as sacred the sublime and the beautiful, as Edmund Burke talked about. There's something in Oppenheimer, I'm sure many of you have seen Oppenheimer. Do you know the name he chose for the site? Trinity. And then he said, I am death destroyer of worlds. Now there is a mystique of violence there. There's something what the French call insaisissable there. And I think sometimes we have a little speed bump over it. You know, and we allow it to close off parts of our minds and part of our hearts. And I'm not trying to be a revivalist preacher here. I'm saying we need the resource of looking at that speed bump. It's the unspoken, the uncanny. It's Thomas Merton's unspeakable and it's Samuel Beckett's unnameable. So unless we can, in the end, acknowledge each other's humanity and try to find some way to, to find a positive solution that, that satisfies everyone, then I think we're just stuck in a negative cycle that has no end, especially in honor of Reed, the goddess and the saint who stood for healing and for renewal, that we do that for ourselves each day. Because as activists, as people who care about the world, it's really important to acknowledge your own humanity as well as the humanity of all sides of the problem and try to see it that way. Because if we only see the negative, we won't find the solution. And for yourself, to continue to be able to, not only to fight the good fight, but also to honor the blessings that we have here. We don't live in a war zone. We don't have to worry about bombs falling on our home. We don't have to see dead bodies in the street every day. We're not starving. We're so, so fortunate. And so it's important every day to do as much as you can to resolve the wrongs in the world. But at the end of the day, it's also important to say to yourself, have I done everything I can do today? And if the answer is yes, then it's time to plant your garden and to sow the seeds of hope and of healing and of renewal and in your own life, in your own inner garden, and then share that with your children and your friends because 
the next generation is going to be the one that really carries this on. And if all the children see is that my mom and dad were miserable all the time because of their activism, then they're not going to, going to want to be activists. So we have to also instill in them an appreciation for all that we have, for the fact that we have the luxury of being activists and not running for our lives every day, and struggling to have enough to eat to survive. We're so, so fortunate. Uh, so and we need to honor that also because the people that were actually um, striving to help, we give anything to have what we have. So we'll say, when Earth was at its most creative, okay? So we have forests, and we've waterfalls gushing, and we've rivers flowing, and we've birds flying with all their song in the air, and their color, and their sound, and it's a world of beauty, and sound, and color. And that's the world that the human emerged into. And so straight away, we have food for our body. We have wonder for our mind. We have beauty for our imagination. And we have intimacy for our soul. 63 countries are responsible for over 90% of greenhouse gas emissions. Do you think Ireland's on that list? Yes. Yes, of course we are. So the Polster piece is where we always took a minute out of our day to just stop everything we were doing and stand still. We really just reflected on ourselves and we talked about St. Fitch's values and how we can bring them into our everyday lives. As far as you know, this is a world record that we did. It's almost having 4,000 people come to get form here with St. Bridget Cross. So we're very, very proud of this. Yeah. Thank you. 